this is absolutely nine. Ben nine. Thank you. Okay. I will invite a real candidate with a high band score. And it was mostly unusual for me because uh, for a person like me who does not go out of her comfort zone to try different things, it was a very new experience for me. So we'll be discussing about the format in the beginning just for a couple of minutes and then we'll jump to the criteria, the assessment criteria, and then we will jump to the real practice session. And I believe you will enjoy that particular part. But again, you need to know the assessment criteria. That's why I'll be discussing that part. And I'll be discussing some um, area about the format. Although you might know it by this time. But again, I feel like that um, few of you might not have the idea about the test. So uh, for that purpose, for that reason, um, I, I will discuss a little bit of that. Namely, they are like task one, task two, task three, or maybe part one, part two, or part three. Um, so the part one, you see introduction and the interview. Um, the part two is actually the long term, like um, two minutes speaking. Uh, and then task three, or I should say the part three is about the discussion. I'll be discussing this, this particular part soon, very soon. So it's a quiz time, my dear friends. Quiz, quiz, I love quiz. So what is the duration of the speaking test? A, B, C, D. Please write in the comment box. If you know it, if you don't know, just guess and write in 10 seconds. Don't take much time. Thank you for your time. The answer is... D, 11 to 14 minutes. Fantastic. Thank you and congratulations to you. So my next question is, how many examiner will conduct the speaking test? One or more than two? Thank you for your answer. So don't worry. Don't get scared that there would be two, three, four, five examiners and they are going to ask you questions. Don't worry. There will be only one who will ask you questions for 11 to 14 minutes. So by this time, now we know the format a little bit. Fantastic. So let's uh, look a quick look at the IELTS speaking test. Okay, the speaking test will assess your use of spoken English, your speaking skills. The test will last between 11 and 14 minutes where you will discuss a variety of topics with an IELTS examiner. Uh, your test will take, take place in a quiet room, of course, and of course. Your test will take place in a quiet room with an examiner who will encourage you to Keep speaking. Yes, that is what I believe that an IELTS examiner will be able to make you feel relaxed and comfortable and confident. They're also able to understand your accent to ensure you get the best possible score. And that's, of course, a very positive approach of the examiners. And there are three parts to the speaking test. Let's learn more. So it is about the assessment criteria. So what do you know about the assessment criteria? Fluency and coherence. Fluency and coherence. That means how clear and structured is your speech. Fluency and coherence. How clear and structured is your speech. Lexical resource. In short, you say LR, lexical resource. How good is your vocabulary? Pronunciation, how naturally you sound. Grammatical range and accuracy. How good is your grammar? And how you handle the sentences. I mean, how you mix the simple, complex, compound, active, passive, 
and the sentence structure, of course. This is the, I would say, the most important aspect of your test because you need to know your weaknesses, your strength, you need to know the criteria. So, for example, since we know it is about the fluency and coherence, so you know how to improve, or if you are not that fluent, you need to concentrate on that part. And we also know the lexical resources. That's another criteria. So if you come to know much about it, about the lexical resources, then you know you can have your own plan that whether you have to use the idioms or idiomatic phrases or whatsoever, or the less, uh, what should I say? I mean, some interesting, exciting um, adjectives, adverbs in your sentences. Pronunciation, of course, you need to know the features, different features of the pronunciation. Uh, if, you, if you don't know that, so I guess um, in the coming week, we'll be discussing about this particular part. And the grammatical range and accuracy, this is again a vital aspect that we all need to know. So um, for example, you, you would learn that what are the areas that we need to concentrate uh, and give you know much importance that is about the grammatical range and accuracy. Another question, what is the scoring ratio of the four criteria? Okay, what is the scoring ratio of the four criteria? And is this correct proportion? So I mentioned four of them and the, 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 the marking proportion, the scoring proportion out of 100, if you consider 100 as a pi. So out of 100, so this is the a proportion. So what do you think, this is the correct one or not? Okay, the answer is no. <coughs> This is the wrong answer, wrong proportion, okay? This is the wrong proportion. So this is the right one, the correct one. So they are equally distributed. The score, the marking, criteria, the proportion would be equally distributed, okay? As you see, fluency and coherence, 25%. Lexical resources, 25%. Grammatical range and accuracy, 25%. Pronunciation feature, or the features, 25%. Okay, my dear friends, let's jump into our real session, okay? Understanding the different parts of the speaking test. I guess by this time you have some idea about the format, some idea about the speaking test. The speaking test consists of three parts, yes. Um, and each part is designed to test a different aspect of your speaking skills. So this is what we're going to learn. And we will learn gradually, step by step. And this is going to be very interesting and exciting. Okay, so be with us and enjoy. So let's practice for the speaking skill. You see an image and the number of images are four. There are four different images. Okay. I hope you can see it. Four different images. And you see a number beside the images. So my question is, which image best describes your lifestyle or the lifestyle of people in your country? So give me the answer, just the first part of the question. Which image, there are four of them, which image best describes your lifestyle? So this is how um, we can think wider and better, of course. Okay, you need to think um, big, okay? You need to see the big picture so then you can discuss you can think more about a particular topic. So my next question is, underline the phrases in sentences one, two, three. There are three of them um, that best describe your lifestyle or the lifestyle of people in your country. So since um, 
it's not possible to underline now. You can write if you consider number one. Uh, most people in my country think it is important to keep fit. Or most people in my country think it is not that important, okay, to do anything specific to keep in shape. I guess the later part is true for the people in our country. The later part. I mean, most people do not really do anything specific to keep themselves fit. What do you think about it? I guess the later part is the, uh, the correct option in our case. Okay, the second one. I keep fit by jogging, by going jogging, by going to the gym, by walking everywhere. What do you think about it? And the third one is I work out all the time. Okay? Maybe you hit the gym for, you know, you, you stay in the gym for several hours or maybe for, for half an hour. Or you are quite an active person. Or I never do any exercise, which is out of this three, which is true for you. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, my dear friends, now the catch part, the exciting part, the interesting part. Now I'm going to invite our guest, Salsabil. And we're going to ask her several questions. And in fact, we'd like to see how she can answer our questions. So Salsabil, I'd like to invite you. Please come over here and please uh, sit beside me. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Great. So thank you for joining me. In, in fact, um, she has got a high band score, particularly in our speaking. So you'll get um, some real answers, I guess, and interesting answers as, as well. So let's jump into the part one, um, the introduction and the interview part. Um, the duration would be around four to five minutes. And in this part of the test, the examiner will introduce themselves and ask you some general questions about yourself, um, your interest, and your background. And in the beginning, the examiner might ask you a question like, do you work or you study? So if I ask you the same question, Salsabil, do you work or you study? What would be the answer? I would say that I'm studying currently and I'm working as well. I'm working part-time so that I can continue my studies along with it. Awesome. This is a very good answer. The reason is uh, it could be a one-word answer. Okay, for example, do you work? Yes, I work. No, I don't work. So it could be just a one-word answer. But in her case, uh, it is an extended answer like she said in almost like two three sentences to answer this particular question okay this easy question this close question this is actually actually a close type question do you like eating burger no or yes okay that's a close question but you can make a longer answer uh, if you think about it Okay, if you um, stay around the topic. So thank you very much for the answer. Fantastic. So my next question is, do you follow a healthy lifestyle? Well, I try to follow a healthy lifestyle. For me, a healthy lifestyle includes a balanced diet, a healthy diet. So I try to consume a balanced diet that con consists of fruits and vegetables, However, due to academic stress, I sometimes fail to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Okay, awesome. So she said the both part. 
she would like to maintain it but for some reasons sometimes she cannot maintain that you know the balanced diet or whatsoever um so we see the two different picture in fact in one answer and my question was um, pretty simple do you follow a healthy lifestyle so that i mean again the answer could be yes or no but she extended and answered uh two of the questions there were in fact two different questions i would ask car uh, the first question is do you follow a healthy lifestyle and the second question was what do you eat in your diet but again i think she said you know both of the answers in uh, both of the questions in one answer okay uh, my answer could be um if you ask me do you follow a healthy lifestyle i would say in the beginning yes i try to follow a healthy lifestyle by eating a balanced diet and exercising regularly okay and if the examiner would ask me the other question what do you eat in your diet then my answer could be i eat a variety of foods in my diet including fruits vegetables whole grains lean protein and healthy fats thereafter i work out for a minimum of 40 minutes so i said what i used to eat and what i do after that and because in the first answer i said you know diet and exercise so in the second part i again said you know what i used to eat and i said thereafter i work out for a minimum of 40 minutes and i said i meditate for 20 minutes thank you for your answer salsabil so you yeah. see she is actually a real candidate and now she has become a trainer because she has got a high band score and a very good teaching skills so with i mean say with that knowledge the background knowledge and we with the teaching skills you know she 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 is able to speak uh to that extent so this is how my dear friends you will learn a lot if you have any question regarding this part you can ask me so let's go to the next one so it's an interesting image you might see the two different aspects two different sides of a person of course you can identify easily that one is positive the other one is negative okay uh <clears throat> so if i ask you salsabil do you have any unhealthy habits well unfortunately i do have few unhealthy un- unhealthy habits one of them would be staying up late and not getting sufficient sleep mm-hmm. and the other one would be eating junk food whenever i get the opportunity mm-hmm. so i'm trying my level best to get rid of both of them okay awesome fantastic fantastic nice so okay my next question to you what are the health benefits of playing a sport well there are numerous benefits of playing sports they can be both physical and mental uh playing sports keeps you in a good shape and it also helps in reducing health issues like high cholesterol and it is also a stress reliever for a few people mhm nice awesome there are a couple of words that you have used um these are i would say b2 c1 level vocabulary so if you use for example c2 level vocabulary or maybe c1 level vocabulary which is equivalent to a band 8 it means in terms of lexical resources you got a high band okay in terms of fluency there i i didn't see any stammering it was natural so uh yes of course in terms of fluency and coherence you again got a high band so this is how my dear friends you can achieve a high band score so learn more stay with us i'm coming up with more um question before that before that if you ask me the same one 
you know, the same question that what are the health benefits of playing a sport? I would say there are several health benefits of playing a sport. There are several benefits, okay, of playing a sport. Like the IELTS writing, if you start with a topic sentence, I mean, or a sentence that you like to extend. So if I say there are several health benefits, several health benefits of playing a sport, then you need to extend it by saying more. Like physical activity can give a better chance to build your muscles and burn fat. So two things you said that physical activity can give a better chance to build your muscle, okay, the muscle, and burn fat. Sports can give physical fitness and as well mental strength. So again, two different aspects, physical fitness and your mental fitness, I would say. Um, active participation in physical activities and sports have a tremendous impact on the human body. Okay, so that is your concluding line. So that's, a, I would say, a rounded answer. Okay, cool. So let's jump into the speaking part two. Individual long term, three to four minutes. Yes, in this part of the test, you'll be given a topic to talk about for one to two minutes. Ideally, two minutes because examiner or, you know, Yes, the examiners will expect you to speak for around two minutes, not just one minute. <clears throat> Although we used to say one to two minutes, but ideally it should be two minutes. And you will also be given a cue card, uh, namely a cue card is nothing but a topic with some questions, I mean with some cues. So that's a cue card, just a topic and some questions, okay? Um, the prompts or the questions will help you structure your response, of course. So let's see a sample, an example cue card, as you see on the, on the slide, on the presentation slide. Um, describe a book or article that you enjoyed reading for your studies. So that's, a, you know, about the past tense, about your past um, you did it sometime before, okay? And then you need to say what the book or the article was about. Is it about um, aerospace engineering or is it about our tour to India or whatsoever? Um, why you read this or that particular book and how long it took you to read whether three months or six months or a year or just two days. There are people who can read faster, okay? Faster than light, is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, and explain why you enjoyed reading it, okay? So these are the questions, the prompts that would be in the cue card or, you know, within the topic and you need to answer them. This, this prompts, in fact, uh, will guide you to answer to the topic, to the questions. Um, so, how about if I ask this, Salsabili, what do you think about this cue card? If I ask you, um, yes, one more thing. Before the cue card, prior to this particular um, section, they will give you around one minute, yes, of course, one minute, no more than a minute. And they will ask you to take some notes if you wish. They will give you a pencil and, or a pen or whatever, a paper and a pencil, and they would ask you to um, take some notes if you wish. So, uh, Salsabel, do you need a minute? Yeah, I would like. Would you like to have a <laughs> minute? minute? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I would like to give Salsabel a minute to prepare, uh, and just after one minute, I would, um, of course, request you to um, talk about it, um, about this uh, particular cue card. So from now, 
we are going going to um, start the uh, stopwatch to see whether it's one minute or more than that. So let's start. Um, you are going to take your preparation, and by this time, you can write your questions. I can answer you. And uh, if you have any particular question for the speaking tests, of course, I'll glad to answer to your questions. You have 15, 50 seconds left. Questions from Mahi. I have a question. Can I join BRC online class? Yes, of course, we're going to start um, that particular um, online class, online course, very soon. So you have 10 seconds left, Salsaville. I'm ready. You are ready? Yeah. Okay. So would you like to speak now? Yeah. Fantastic. Please say something about the cue card. Okay, so I would like to talk about the book To Kill a Mockingbird written by Harper Lee. Wow. It talks about a young girl named Scout back in the 1930s and her experiences with racism and social injustice. Mm -hmm. So I read the book back in high school for my English literature assignment, mm -hmm. and it took me around two weeks to finish the book. Okay. Uh, initially, I was drawn to the book as it was a classic novel. Mm -hmm. However, as I started reading it, I started connecting more and more to the characters as they were very well-developed and relatable. Okay. And... What I enjoyed the most about reading that book is the way it handled difficult topics like racism, social injustice, and equality, inequality in a manner uh, for young readers like us that it was very engageable and it was easy for us to understand and connect. So this is what I enjoyed the most about the book. Even though I read it for my assignment, however, reading the book gave me a deeper connection with literature, and I started appreciating literature more, mm -hmm. and I also started reading more and more. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Fantastic. I love fiction and nonfiction both. Uh, and you used several C2-level words, okay, C1-level words, um, so, in terms of lexical resources, there's a high band, I would say like 8.5 to 9, uh, particularly, I mean, the lexical items, lexical resources, your vocabulary is very rich. So, that's a uh, band 9, I would say. In terms of fluency, you are natural, in fact. Uh, uh, and, and the pronunciation, you have got several pronunciation features. So again, that's 8.59 in terms of uh, grammatical range and accuracy. I didn't find any mistake, major mistake, I would say. So again, it's a um, you know, 8.5 to 9 band, okay, in terms of um, if I consider this uh, cue card section particularly. The previous section, I mean the part one questions and the answers uh, where I would say, yeah, absolutely fine. Um, let's see another cue card. I'd like to give you another test, okay, to check whether this is going to be a nine or not, okay? A challenge, okay? So this one is a bit difficult, I would say. Describe an unusual meal you had, okay? And the questions or the prompts are, when it was, where you had the meal, and what happened during the meal. Again, my dear friends, let's keep your watch, okay? Let's see the stopwatch. From now, you'll get, again, one minute. And another challenge, let's see whether she can get uh, a band nine or what. In fact, in the real test, she is a real candidate now, a trainer. Uh, she has got a high band score. So, but again, um, I, would I would love to challenge. I would love to see. And people would love to see whether um, she can sustain that level. But again, one more thing, my dear friends. This is a live session. 
not just a one-to-one -one session. There are many people are watching this. Hundreds of uh, my followers are watching this. Thank you, my dear followers. Thank you, my dear friends, my fellow friends, and uh, my awesome friends. Thank you very much. And so um, it's not easy uh, for her, I would say. For me as well, it's not that easy. So, but again, um, let's see. So from now, I would like to um, count that, count the seconds from now. Let's just start. Oh, it's more than a minute, <laughs> so I will. I guess you were ready by this time. Um, would you like to start? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So it was back in 2019 when I went to visit my village with my parents. That is when I had the opportunity of consuming an unusual meal that I was very reluctant on having at first. However, my parents forced me to have it as it was my grandmother's special dish. So the dish consisted of cow feet, liver, and uh, intestine. So it did not seem very appetizing to me when it was brought to me. Uh, however, I was forced to have it. So although being reluctant, I tried it. <laughs> but uh, to my surprise, it was very delicious. And it was very tender. The flavors were complementing each other well. Mm. I could taste the herbs, the lemon, the spices. And to my surprise, it was extremely good. So this is when I had the unusual <coughs> meal. And it was mostly unusual for me because uh, for a person like me who does not go out of her comfort zone to try different things, it was a very new experience for me. So yeah, this is why it was unusual. Awesome. I love that part. Um, I would say this answer is better than the previous one. So I would say this is absolutely nine, than nine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Salsabil. So my dear friends, what do you think about this? Anything? Please write your comments. Are you happy with this? Or would you like to add something else? Let's learn about uh, the part three. Okay. Part three, two-way discussion, four to five minutes. This is a critical part, in fact, um, because uh, the examiner will ask you some follow-up questions, but some complicated questions. Um, in this part of the test, you will have a discussion with the examiner on the topic um, from part two. The examiner will ask you follow-up questions to elicit more information from you. And a sample question, as you see here, in fact, uh, it could be, you know, I've written it already. Indian cuisine varies greatly depending on the region. Have you tried any other regional dishes from India? How did they differ from the meal you describe? So she said um, she had an, I would say, exotic dish. <laughs> exotic meal, exotic food, uh, because that was for the first time she ate, she tried. I would say it was forceful, so rather than trying it, I would say, um, yeah, forcefully she ate that. Coerced into doing it. Yeah. Um, so the, you know, followed questions could be, have you tried any other regional dishes um, in, in any other district um, from Bangladesh, okay? 
uh, and then how did they differ from the meal you described, the meal she said. So that might be a critical one, a critical question, um, because it is about critical rezoning. So I had one answer. I just prepared here, in fact. Yes, um, I have tried a few regional dishes from India, and they differ greatly from the meal I described. One dish that comes to my mind is biryani, which is a popular rice-based dish that originated in the Indian subcontinent. So you see several <clears throat> words and phrases I colored, um, particularly the, the verbs. For example, I have tried, um, and a phrase, a uh, few regional dishes from India, and they differ greatly. So you can write, they differ. You also can write, they differ greatly, okay? So by adding adjectives and adverbs, you can make your sentences and your answer uh, more like um, exciting, of, of course. If you say they differ greatly, so that creates uh, an excitement as well. From the meal I described, one dish that comes to my mind, that's a good phrase, a verb though, but that comes to my mind or the, that comes to mind is then you write blah, blah, blah. The biryani I had was from Hyderabad, which is known for its flavorful and spicy version of the dish. The biryani was made with, okay, made with long grain basmati rice mixed with aromatic spices, tender meat, and fried onions. You said one word, like tender meat, maybe. Yes, fantastic. Um, it was served, so a verb, okay? When uh, <clears throat> you see in a restaurant or anywhere, uh, people serve the dishes to you, in fact. So when it was served with raita, which is a yogurt-based side dish, Compared to the dokla, because the question was, which is better or how did you feel about that, a new one? So it is about the comparison. So the first part, the introductory part, the second part is about the dish. The third part is the comparison. And the, and the last part, you said, overall, I found blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is how you can... Um, divide your answer into three, four parts and make your answer uh, a band nine answer, I would say. Okay, so until now, until now, thank you very much. We'll be coming up with more in future. Uh, next week, I would like to discuss about the assessment criteria which is one of the, I would say, most crucial aspects. But in most cases, we avoid this, we skip that part, because there are a few things that looks like complicated, and we'd like to avoid them. But this is the area, uh, I would say, as, a, as an adult learner, you can have your own plan, so that's why if you start with your strengths and weaknesses, that's the best way to start. So my dear friends, good luck to you. And I'd like to thank Salsabil for joining me. Thank you, sir, for having me. And good luck.